it's uh, one minute uh, pa one minute past uh, the hour one o'clock and we are in the second lap of our show and I said that uh, we'll be having uh, Mrs. Uh, Patricia Trish she's already in the building and uh, she's about to speak to us uh, soon anytime soon uh, I'll be putting her on air to 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 tell us to conversate uh, about uh, these issues that uh, these kids uh, our our students are facing at uh, various uh, schools uh, so Mrs. Uh, Patricia please do introduce ourselves uh, yourself to our listeners today. Oh, hi everyone. My, my name is Patricia Trish M. And I thank you very much for welcoming on the show today. Thanks. Thank you so much for also availing yourself. Yes, <laughs> it's very important <laughs> once things like this appear, you have to be there. <laughs> okay, uh, please uh, do tell us what do you do, Mrs. Patricia? Oh, okay. Uh, before I say that, I would like to say happy birthday to my mom and her twin today. Wow. It's their birthday and my uncle as well. May he's always in peace. Um, I'm in the environment of information technology. Mm -hmm. uh, my career is li lies on health and environmental. Uh, I do things like nursing and patient care, mm -hmm. information technology on development stream, mm -hmm. like development like website, anything software based, and scouts and music. And I'm an author. I wrote two books, mm -hmm. which one of them is If Only You Knew, and the other one is a dissertation based on how artificial intelligence has improved the life of people with disability, but most focused on the ones who are blind and visually impaired. Mm. I hear that you're speaking about so many things. You achieved so many things uh, uh, in life. Uh, do you mind actually sharing to, to the listeners your age? Maybe they, they're not away, you know? <laughs> this person is speaking as if they've been around, you know? I'm not really that old, you know? I'm not really that old. I'm just 25, going to be turning 26 in July. 25, and she's already achieved so much. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, the thing yeah. that you're just mentioning, it's it's like, wow, it's, it's, mm. it's really... Uh, um, inspiring it's inspiring because when you look at it uh, some of our youth today we find that youth are, are, are complaining so much about particular things mm -hmm. to say we're not getting there we're not reaching there but look at you at this age you've already accomplished so much yeah but most of the things I didn't just start them after I finished school mm -hmm. most of them I started when I was still in school like uh, road management and school of patrol I started them in primary and continued until high school so it was just basically learning about the road being on the road dealing with how traffic people manage and kind of develop all the things that are happening in our roads and even the stream of psychology i did it in middle school mm. with this department they called central apartment it was like activity like extracurricular activities that you can do while you're still in school mm. yeah Wow, that's that's really amazing. But do our do our schools still have such programs today? Do they? I so? doubt. I doubt because most of the kids that I spoke to, they don't have such things. It's just soccer and netball, just the ordinary sports that's things all. that we do. Yeah. But uh, what can we do by by with yeah, that? We can there's do nothing that, that we can, there's can nothing do. we can do. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, keeps you motivated and makes you keep going? You know. Yeah. What just drives you? What is your drive? You know, in life, if you can tell yourself that, there is the term that I like to use. It was used by this actor in the, if I remember correctly, it's uh, Indianapolis 500, is the car racing thing. Mm -hmm. He's the biggest racer of the Indianapolis. He used to say, no dream is too big mm -hmm. and no dream is too small. Mm -hmm. It means that it, there is no dream that is too small for you to achieve. Exactly. And there is no young person who can say, I'm too young to achieve such things. Mm -hmm. Anyone can achieve anything as long as they put their mind to it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're old or it doesn't matter if you're young or less fortunate or middle fortunate or wherever you are. If you put your, yourself and your mind to something, you're going to achieve it. Whether it's not even up to us, it's not even up to anyone around you, not even around your parents or your teachers, your siblings. It's up to you. If you put your mind into something, you're going to achieve it. What we have to do around you is to support you. And even if we don't, like most kids right now, they don't get that much support or information that they need regarding something. 
it's not even up to us. You can do it, whether you are alone or not. It's your dream, it's your destiny. Whether you change paths, you're gonna end up in your destiny. It doesn't matter who says what. Mm. Uh, those are powerful words uh, coming from uh, Mrs. Uh, Patricia out there. So, uh, what challenges do you get? You, what challenges do you go through? As you mentioned, that there's so many things. You wrote books. You, you, you do. You did so much. So, yeah. what type of challenges uh, do you get? And how do you actually come to a point of saying that you know what? Above all pressure and all yeah. odds, I'm just going to do that. Uh, challenges are challenges. You know that mm. everyone has challenges, but. The biggest challenge that I had in my life is financial challenges because I grew up with parents that are not working mm -hmm. and even then they're, they're still not working but they are old now, I'm the only one who's working. So when I grew up I wanted to do like a lot of things, go to university, pursue my studies, do something but the only thing that I had challenges in is finances mm -hmm. and even the financial space it was like you know when you are in a state whereby some financial institute you are too poor to get them mm -hmm. and others you are too kind of rich to get them mm -hmm. so i was just in that state whereby my parents had to do everything for me they had to pay for my colleges they had to do all those things and they couldn't even get work because the book that i told you about for mm -hmm. disabilities i based it around my dad because he's the one who's blind so the reason behind that book was to write it in order to help him and other people out there. So it was kind of too hard for me to get where I want to go because I was not financially stable to do that. And I was a kid. I, I saw other kids having things light and I wish that I had something that they had. But when time goes by, I learned to understand that as people, we have a lot of challenges in life and we experience them in different ways just because i didn't have what they had it didn't mean i couldn't pursue what i wanted exactly yes so we can get things that we want in life not the way we want because we know that there is this say that says god can give you something but he is not going to give it to you the same way you asked for it mm -hmm. it's going to come in many ways because if something is yours it's yours this road that I take, maybe I wanted to get them first, but he wanted me to learn something first. Mm -hmm. So everything, every challenge that I had, I spoke to my parents, they were there all the time. So, and I was a kid that was so curious. I always asked questions. Like they, I would go home and be like, but why, why is this not happening the way I want it? I don't want to do this, I want to do this. They were like, you need to choose one activity, but having a lot of things in my table that's how i feel like i could cope because mm -hmm. the more i was in pressure it was like the more my mind could open up mm -hmm. i could see things clearly i could i could see what i want to do when i had a lot of things because i only had one role in life to help people so if i can do a lot of things that are not linked or intertwined in any way but their goal is to help people. I would help people so that me helping them can help me as well. So I hear you saying that uh, it was not an easy process for you to, mm -hmm. to, to, to literally like uh, go to study, you know, because of finances and everything. So prob obviously you do have an experience of how uh, a student out there, probably who doesn't have it as yes. you didn't have it. Yes. You know their experiences, you know their challenges, you know what they, they go through daily. Mm -hmm. Like what type of motivation can you give this particular student in varsity who, who feels overwhelmed? you know yeah one thing i can tell them is that i'm human they are human if i did it they can do it mm -hmm. and what they have to do is that i know that hope and faith can be lost sometimes mm -hmm. especially when things don't go the way you want just they should hold on hold on in there because i don't believe that you can be put in a situation whereby you cannot go out mm -hmm. and i would like to tell them that whenever you are in a tunnel of I could say hell or something don't stop in there keep going because there might be the light at the end of the tunnel so if you stop in the middle of that hell that you're going through you're not gonna go anywhere you're gonna stuck in that middle of that hell so in order for you to see the light of the end of the tunnel you need to take a step keep moving don't give up because 
you might find that not just you're not even just doing that for you mm-hmm. you're doing it for the parents that are trying to help you to get there so you going on or being strong you are not just being strong for yourself you are being strong for them because you are the hope you are the light that they didn't get themselves so you achieving good things it gives them pride that them as parents they can achieve and bring that flower that can bloom nicely at the end of the day i hear you mrs uh, petunia and uh, what uh, is encour- what you just saying it's so encouraging because mm-hmm. some of uh, our students you know like they worry over things that i would say sometimes it's it's really less important because mm-hmm. what they worry about is things like maybe clothes or comparison. yes yeah. comparison who dresses so much <laughs> better than i yes. do yes. and i feel low because at my house who cannot actually afford certain things because yeah. this person dresses well so those are the type of challenges that uh, they find themselves under but mostly i want you to, to 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 talk about those ones who because i heard i was in a conversation yesterday with one of my colleagues and i asked him um do you think that uh, uh university uh kids are really facing that much you know yes, and he yes. said then he said yes yeah. of course they are yes. there are even some who actually sleep without eating mm-hmm. and i was i was like i was just it's blown. true it's true i i had that problem i had that problem and it's true obviously when it i would say like a university it's like going to work mm. you go to work every day with your jeans and your simple top and your shoes then there comes a lady with some heels and a two piece suits that she doesn't repeat every day she wears and after two months is the same pressure that university kids have imagine we are at school you eat buddhist pato every day and i don't i go i go to class with an empty stomach it's very hard because the the rate in which we live at home right now mm. it's so relaxed than the life that we are living in university mm. the life that we are living in university is so fast in a way that you won't even understand what hits you when and how it's just moves at a speed of light and you will even find it difficult when you move away from your hometown and study somewhere else because it's the culture is mm. the people is the language is everything that they do it's foreign to you because you are not used to that some kids even see that they can't uh, about majority if a lot of people do this it means it's right if less people do this it means it's, it's wrong so they will get there find that people wear this they eat this they do this they don't have the luxury to have the same thing now they'll even have to turn and be like this is the easy way out and especially for us girl I lived in a place where I used to because you know that Khaldin is a very fast That's place. Nice. Yeah. So I got there. I didn't have the money. I didn't have anything. All the money that I had was to pay rent, was to pay school. And all that I can tell them is that for you not to get clouded by those things, you have to remember the goal. You are not there to compete mm-hmm. about clothes. You are not there for fashion designing or modeling or marketing or anything. You are there to pursue whatever that you want. So if you could remember the goal, do some things that can help you yourself to get that money if it's money that you want because i ended up doing assignments for other kids and then paying me because i couldn't even afford to buy my own food mm-hmm. because i can't call my parents saying i don't have food while i know that they don't have food as well mm-hmm. it's going to be painful for them and painful for me mm-hmm. so if i can do something about my situation if i can do something to get food or put food in my table, table without losing my way because the goal here is to go to school and study so you have to remember the goal i know it's going to be hard not even going to be hard it, it is, is hard it mm-hmm. is hard you know and even in univo the nearest university that we have there are kids like few years back who enrolled in the school with no place to stay they were guys they could you know go to girls tell them that they like them all that sleep around because oh they God. didn't have a place to stay they were just desperate they were just desperate so there's a lot of things that kids go through that people out there don't see it mm. we, we come to you today we smile you don't know what happened Behind we come to you doors. exactly we mm. go to school we meet other kids they tell us how it was nice yesterday they are dead took them to spare and you have three days without eating anything and you can't say that because if you can face the fact it's not their problem 
Exactly. It's not their problem. So no one cares as long as it's not happening to them. That is uh, quite interesting. And uh, for the fact that you said that um, these kids face um, face day-to-day challenges, and you also made an example of particularly guys who actually just asked girls out because they were desperate. But do you but do you really think that? Um, that's the way to go because majority of us as much as we are frustrated uh at at, at schools you know we are frustrated mm-hmm. in varsity mm-hmm. is it okay to literally uh go to that level of literally becoming so desperate yeah. to that point or do you think that we should focus as you said look for mm-hmm. something that you can do that doesn't really literally need you to mm-hmm. sell yourself or do particular things like that it's not but you have to remember that uh, as people we don't have the same level of mental stability Mm -hmm. the pressure that i can uh, take is the pressure that you might not be able to take Mm -hmm. the way i react to situations might not be the way you can react to situations Mm -hmm. as a person um if there it was someone else they could have maybe went into prostitution when i was still in school Mm -hmm. because it was an easy way out if someone was each showing you easy money you could have easily gone there but some person can say no that's not a way to go i can do this instead but with us telling them such things like this some people even go out there be like this is only happening to me Mm -hmm. i'm only doing this because you don't understand you haven't been in that situation but if they can see that a person like them a human like them a kid like them went through the same thing they can see that that's not the only way to do even the support needs to come from people that we live in, not even just particularly parents, but mm-hmm. guidance or siblings that friends, we go, friends. You, know? mm-hmm. you need to keep giving them some hope because if the person can go to that level of extremity, it means that to them, they haven't seen a solution yet. That's the only solution that they see. So you have to be the beacon of light to their eyes, even if showing someone the right thing to do is not like telling them mm-hmm. what to do. You have to round your round them with facts that can show them them themselves making the idea that this is the way to go. You don't need to tell them, but you need to show them how to have the idea to have such things. Mm. That's a wonderful conversation that we're having about uh, kids that are facing challenges, about our students that are facing uh, challenges at uh, varsities. And uh, I'm here with Mrs. Petunia, and we're just going to take a quick uh, ad break just to drink that water, and then we'll be back uh, for more. And she'll also be motivating our students today to say, you know what, don't give and don't give up. So stay tuned for more. It is uh, 21 minutes uh, past the hour, 1 o'clock, and you're still tuned in to Mabata FM 107.7 megahertz, the home of uh, gospel. I'm still here with uh, Trish, and uh, if ever you do have any particular questions, you can send them through our WhatsApp at 073-339-1835, just to, you know, to, to hear maybe a clear uh, vision to say, you know what, Trish, you made it, and look where you are today. Uh, what can I do probably she can advise you with two or three uh, things uh, that she's got uh, down her sleeves so Trish what's the last uh, motivation can you give to our students who are actually going through these day-to-day challenges it's like I said uh, the quote that I gave you I would like to tell them that no dream is too big and no dream is too small so it doesn't matter that dream how big it is or how small do you think it is If something is yours, it's yours. And I believe that if you do everything in your power, it doesn't matter how long it takes, eventually you're going to get there. You just have to push yourself, push yourself to the limits, know your limits, be able to achieve whatever that you do. And achievement doesn't just come from one thing. You can excel in many things. I wrote books, I have channels, I motivate people, I do psychological things. It doesn't just come from one thing. You can be the beacon of light from every industry or every field that you feel that you can do. 
so whatever that you're trying to pursue in school do it whatever that you want to pursue maybe for community service or something do it you will find your calling and you will know it because some people might enter into things not knowing what they excel in you can get into a field and find yourself ravishing in that field but not knowing from the start so whenever something belongs to you you guys will find yourself you will cross path in any way that's everything that i believe in so i would just want them to remember every day and tell themselves that no dream is too big and no dream is too small Hmm. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Trish. And uh, also, before you, you you leave, I actually want you to also uh, motivate our workers today, as we know that uh, yes, it is yes. International Workers yes. Day. Yes. So I want you to encourage them as well because they are doing a great and a phenomenal job. Yes. Job, you know, yes. they're there, always there at their offices, always there to assist. You know. So yes. what word of motivation can you give to them today? For our workers, we know that our workers go through a lot. Mm -hmm. Most of the environment that they work in might be toxic, mm -hmm. or the pay that they get is not directly proportional to the work that they are doing. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to tell them is that they should remember the goal. The reason you woke up in the morning to go look for a job is to take care of your family, mm -hmm. is to do something for your kids, is to do something that's meaningful to your life and for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So don't mind everything that happens. Yes, the environment that we work in, we, we are there every like five days, some, some even work seven days. So don't let things that are not meaningful uh, uh, disregard you from your goal. Remember your goal, you were there to work, you were there to get what you want to support your family. Do that and let it be. Do your job and go. Stop getting clouded by things that don't even have a thing in your life. They don't even mean that. Those are just distractions that are put in your way to disregard you to something that you're looking at. But take them as just a slight thing. Mm -hmm. Wear a raincoat like when it's raining. Let them slide away let them be and continue with your goal thank you so much uh, for encouraging our our workers out there so hold on don't give up and always look towards that particular goal that you had mm -hmm. uh, from the get-go you know we all set our goals so just focus remember on that goal. one remember that particular goal uh, so Trish uh, how can uh, our listeners get a hold of you uh, on your socials I have three socials, okay. which is the YouTube channel, it's Patricia Trish M, it's Facebook, Patricia Trish M, and TikTok, it's Patricia Trish M. So most of the episodes are posted in YouTube, then TikTok and Facebook, they'll just get links that will direct them to the YouTube, but every platform that I use, it's Patricia Trish M. Thank you so much for for bracing us and uh, for, for, for actually... Uh, coming in studio and for availing yourself today it was really a great and a phenomenal conversation thank you for having me and you do have a question uh it reads as follows ask patricia how ask patricia it's it's who trish no it's tri it's trish okay. ask trish how do you cope when you are laughing uh when you are laughing stock in varsity it reads like that ask trish how do you cope when you're laughing stock in uh varsity as much as you are encouraging yourself uh you end up losing strength is that yes, what it is uh, one thing I can... Uh, is it a brother or a sister? I don't know. It's okay. anonymous. Anonymous. Okay, <laughs> anonymous. Um, one thing that I need to tell you is that people who laugh at you are bullies, right? Because they are trying to discourage you in doing something. One thing you have to learn about bullies is that they don't. something that they do to you, you'll find that it's something that has been done to them. So you are intimidating them. So the only way for a person who's intimidated by your presence is to bring you down and the only way for them to bring you down is to make you a laughing stock so don't stoop to their level mm -hmm. even tell them that you know what i feel sorry for you but it's gonna be okay because you'll find that the same thing that they're trying to discourage you is something that they have been discouraged about mm -hmm. or something that they are being discouraged of every day so them laughing at you it's not really them laughing at you it's them pitying themselves for not being the way you are.
so the your presence alone is too much for them to handle so brace yourself show up and laugh and be like you know what it's going to be okay i i i might feel sorry for you but it's going to be okay because it's not about you it's about them <laughs> and uh, you do have another question here okay. and it reads as follows trish how do i move from just being uh, uh, an ex substance abuser and try trying to pick up okay for the fact that i love the fact that they said x it means that they 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 they, they left that thing right mm -hmm. it means that they, so the power that they use to leave that thing is the power that they can use to say you know what i will not do this mm -hmm. they left it for a reason because when you are addicted to something it's the most hardest thing that you can do is to leave exactly. that thing so for the fact that they said i'm an ex substance abuser it means that they left the thing so let that thing be their encouragement that if i can leave that thing it means that i have the power i have the control because mm -hmm. that thing is not controlling them anymore is the one that they are controlling the situation so some people would be like when you vomit you don't take the vomit back right mm -hmm. so they vomited that substance so let them bury it now they have the control not the substance clean it up clean it up yes <laughs> clean yourself up eh? yes. and there's also another question here for you uh mrs uh, trish uh it, it reads as follows hey trish anonymous here uh i used to hate school this person says yeah. that i used to hate school banking it like nobody's business <laughs> now i'm grown no qualifications no fees please advise okay hi anonymous um <laughs> everybody hates school i hate it too everyone's like i i i understand what they said but i didn't like it mm -hmm. i hated school to a point that i was like i want to do it because i want to finish it mm -hmm. but what's what's important about this technology is that you can go back you mm -hmm. can go back and study again because the way the person anonymous is saying it is that they now have the the fire to go back and study they don't have qualifications but what's nice about the technology that you are in right now you can go back and study again there are free platforms that you can use to register like a few months ago i saw they were releasing forms for people who didn't complete their matric to go right again so that they can get their qualifications mm -hmm. so what i can say to anonymous is that whatever grade that you left behind there are so many institutions uh, i don't know where the an uh, anonymous is but in around Bafikeng, I think it's like Mabatuai, Botswana, and Maskomi is still there. That help people. Even Taleto used to do it from grade eight. If you left school from grade mm -hmm. eight, you can still go back and register and continue with your studies. And what's good about most of these things is that they are free, and there are wow. even there are even NGOs that can take students to the. You come to their uh, organization and. They register you and help you further your studies. So, yeah, anonymous can do that. Mm. Uh, so, uh, anonymous feathers to us to say, Trish. So, I'm like a person who who can have so many ideas, mm -hmm. right, in my mind, uh, or write them. But I struggle to make them manifest because mostly I doubt myself uh, most of the time. Speak to me, my sister, as a belief. You know what I know is that the big things are challenging and big things are scary. So whatever things that they have in mind, it means that they are so good that mm. even him or her, it's so hard. But I would say start like simple. A uh, TikTok is so influential. Mm. Write those things or say them in a video or write them and post them, and you will see. It People means that react. you you will see. They will go out. You will manifest those things. I uh, know right now media is so influential that you can even be famous without even putting a single cash. Only thing that you need is data. So write those things down and show it to the world. And one thing that uh, you just saying that uh, media is so powerful. There was a certain uh, there was a certain man who was just speaking. You know, I was listening to. He said, "You know what? Uh, social media is so powerful." They say that when you post about maybe good things, maybe you just post about uh, guys I'm living large or something, probably you won't get so many likes. Exactly. But the minute you just post yourself crying, everybody exactly. will everybody ask. Everybody will be there because one thing you don't know about something that you're posting, especially him saying that 
um, the anonymous has good things to say, has a lot of things to say, but they doubt themselves. It's not about them. If they mm-hmm. write that something down, you don't know who's reading on the other side. Maybe you are helping someone who's down. You are helping someone who was about to give up in life, but because of your words, because of your video, because of your words, they, they will keep going. Uh, and uh, I do have also another question for you, Mrs. Trish, and it reads as follows. Please help the names of the N. GOs, if possible. I think that's what they wanted to to write here. N because I see N G and I just see O S. Yes, NGOs. Yes, yes, if possible. Thank you so much. You are so wise for your age. God bless you and keep you. Thank you. The, very much. the youth needs you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, for the NGOs, I'm not sure about the ones that are currently here because you know most of the NGOs get deregistered and all that. I'll just say, let me find out the names of the NGOs and I'll send them to you, then you can share with them. Okay, okay, yes. Mrs. Trish, uh, but you can also uh, repeat your socials, how they can get a hold of you. Okay, so I that's... can even post them in my socials for them to get. Okay. So uh, from my socials, it's YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's Patricia Trish M. Patricia Trish M. You heard it. Uh, you heard it uh, from Mrs. Trish herself, Patricia Trish M. So do follow her also on her socials. She's there on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram, right? TikTok and YouTube and Facebook. Oh, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, Facebook and YouTube. And YouTube. So do follow her and uh, let her also enlighten you and make you wise. And thank you so much for all for all those who took part in uh, actually uh, being part and parcel of our conversation with Mrs. Trish. And uh, hopefully she answered your questions well. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> and you guys should keep well. I love that your question it shows that they they have that light to do want to do something about their life, which is very important for our youth. Mm, it's yeah. very very important. very important. So keep those questions coming. Uh, if there's somebody out there probably who has a question, do keep those questions uh, coming or do follow her on her socials to find out more. What can you do? How you can you stand? You know, it's so encouraging to see uh, at her age, she already has achieved so much. And uh, you look at such people and you're like, oh my goodness, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. What am I doing we with my life? We have to help each other. We have to help each other to remind each other to do good. Uh, thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Trish, for, for blessing us with your with your presence here in studio. We hope to speak to you soon. Thank soon. you very much. I'm just a phone call away. You're just a phone call away. Thank you so much. Please do avail yourself next time uh, here on studio physically. No problem. No, problem. no, uh, no calls. Physically. No, physically. Yes. yes. No calls. Please. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, 25 to uh, the hour, 2 o'clock, and you're still tuning into Mama to FM 107.7 megahertz, the home of gospel. And Mrs. Trish, have a safe trip back home. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And have a blessed day. Thank you. <laughs>